Hello, Steve White, Trek Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, this is the second time I'm doing this review, but the first one was 18 minutes long and had a bit of ranting, so I thought I might do it again. Because um, no one, even if no one would watch that, and even if they did, it just wouldn't be fair to them. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to someone. Um, I'm watching this so you don't have to, so it shouldn't be hell to watch me go on about it. But, um, okay, so this episode. It's the seventh episode. It's called Much To Do About Boilermer. Um, it was okay in the end, but there were some huge issues during the episode which really bothered me, so I'll get to that. Now, we start off with um, a weird little teaser, pre-show thing, um, and you've sort of seen this in, in the trailers. Basically, Tindy creates a dog which acts totally normal, but whenever she's not around, it turns into some the thing type mutant or machine. It just changes form all the time. It even turns into a square block that rolls along the floor, and people just act like, okay, like this is normal, but we're just ignoring this. Um, and it's just weird because what's weird is Tendi apparently has the the knowledge and ability to create a sentient life form or an android. I'm not sure what it was, but yet she didn't have. She didn't work out what a dog was like they they say oh we don't have dogs on my planet so she know what a dog was but yet she had the knowledge to create an artificial life form but she couldn't manage to do the basic research to find out what a dog was and how it would act so she thinks it's normal and this is supposed to be the joke and it's not really funny and it's just stupid because there's no way someone could achieve all that but yet not have the knowledge or, or, or the idea to actually work out how a dog should act it's just stupid so we get into the main part of the episode where um, the main story, basically the command crew, the, Bajo the, the scary Bajoran security officer, Commander Dubro, and um, the Admiral, not the Admiral, the husband's the Admiral, um, Mariner's mother, the captain, leave the ship. They've been recruited as some sort of um, elite force to, and this is where it's sort of stupid and it's supposed to be funny, it's not. Um, they're basically finding or rescuing or transporting um, some seeds which are apparently dangerous or it doesn't make any sense it's not funny I don't know what that was but um so they're off the ship and they bring on a babysitter captain and of, and of course Mariner's carrying on and like I don't want a babysitter captain they don't know what they're doing but uh, it's like Jellico we'll get a Jellico and like why would this crew know anything about that situation with TNG the, with the Enterprise from TNG there's there's there, Captains would take over for other captains on when they go for different missions all the time. This would be totally normal. It would happen a bunch of times. No crew would hear about what happened with the Jellico, Captain Jellico, and the Enterprise D. It makes no sense except to to make a reference, which Star Star Trek fans are supposed to go, "Oh yeah, you watched episodes, you know, you know." Um, so that's stupid. Um, like Mecha Random does a great joke with this. She just goes through all the references and has a bell that dings every time. <laughs> but um, this is the only big, there's a couple of references, this is the big one, and it's just stupid. Um, so, the, the, the new captain comes on and she knows Mariner. They went to um, um, Starfleet Academy together. So she immediately starts treating her like she has to be the best person on this crew. She's like, Ensign? What the hell? And she says, well, for now, while I'm here, you'll be the first first officer. So, of course, we have this Mary Sue sort of um, scenario where, of course, she's treated like the best thing ever. Um, and she starts screwing up. and She screws everything up. And I'm like, yes. They're actually showing that officers actually have to work. They actually have to try to actually, you know, be good officers. And this person who deliberately tr avoids responsibility avoids regulations just does everything she can to disrupt everything which the, the Vulcan member of the crew because a couple of crew members come over with the captain and she's just ripping her and like do you always disrupt missions like is this what what you do um and I'm like yes they're actually showing that she's not a Mary Sue she's not perfect she she is actually a screw up and she may know more than the lower decks crew and may um intimidate them or sort of insult them or sort of rule over them because she's had the most experience and everything but when actually put in a situation of command with real, trained, efficient um, Starfleet crew, she's, she's, a, she's a screw up. And I was really enjoying that part. But then it got bad because um, 
Rutherford was experimenting on making the transporter work quicker, and for some reason Boilermere volunteers to jump in, so beams him over, yeah, it worked, it was quicker. I, I, I don't really, I guess in emergencies, I don't know, once you've got the pat, this is where stupidity comes in, once you've got the pattern of the person, it doesn't matter how long it takes for them to actually be reformed, unmaterialized. So the beaming process, how long it takes, doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. So making a transporter that works a second quicker, goes a second quicker, doesn't change anything, because it's stupid people who, who think, who don't understand the, the theoretical process of beaming, think that that's going to make a difference in an emergency. So that sets up something later. Um, and of course he beams him over fine, beams him back, and he ends up um, not fully materialized, and constantly making the transporter sound really loud, louder than, I guess, it seems like they normally do, and he's partly transparent like a ghost, like he's blue and, and, and transparent. So, of course, he tries to go to work like normal because he wants to impress this new commander and get a, get um, um, what, what is it when they give him a new rank? Um, it's not an upgrade, I'm losing my words. Um, it's in the back of my head, I'll just have to leave it. He's hoping to get a promotion, promotion. So he tries to go to the bridge and act like normal. They send him to sick base. Sick base says, "Yeah, you're going. We're going to send you to um, was it Division 14?" So Division 14 shows up. Division 14 shows up on a black ship coming out of some red space anomaly, like the gates of hell. Um, and the guy who's in charge of it comes out with a mask, and he's all like, "Think 1970s um, Dracula villain, sort of um, Christopher Lee, sort of." <laughs> I'm going to take you off to the farm. So he comes in, he takes Boilermer and the mutant dog, um, and when he gets on the ship he finds out that basically there is no farm, because he thinks he's going to the suit to, to like a resort where he's going to like be taken care of while they cure him or just give him somewhere, you know, nice to like live his days as a mutant, um, or an experimental disaster. He gets on the ship and there's a whole bunch of freaks and mutants who call themselves freaks and mutants and they're all experiments and, and, and um, mutations and things and they're like, there is no farm, this is the farm. And they're basically like stuck in a brig together, like there's like 10 or 20 of them at least. And, and this is where it got really offensive and I got angry. It's like, and I wanted to stop the episode because it was like, there's no way in hell Starfleet would do this to people. Just kidnap them basically and keep them in like a brig and this guy was explaining, oh, they'd, they'd want to hide us from the rest of Starfleet because they, they think it would deter people going into Starfleet if they knew that this could happen to them, that um, regularly or something, there's experiments, and, and all these things look like things that could have been cured, that, that Dr. McCoy would have cured in a minute. Um, so that was just offensive, and uh, Boilermer goes and try, they're, they're going to mutiny. They plan to mutiny, and Boilermer is trying to fix the situation, so he goes with this captain, and instead of the captain trying to defuse the situation, he goes and basically threatens them all with a gun and locks them in um, their quarters, although they are all stay in the same room, which doesn't make any sense, but it was, you know, <laughs> it's lower decks. And then they all turn on him because he dobbed on them, so they literally throw him out an airlock. Now, when he goes out the airlock, he ends up landing on the ground because they've landed at the farm. And, and it is actually a beautiful resort where they are pampered and treated like um, royalty. So I was relieved that this, and it's supposed to be a joke, and then, and then this captain comes out and he's like, oh, perhaps, oh, oh, I didn't realise you would think like this. Well, perhaps maybe we should, um, you know, paint the ship a different colour and turn the lights on. And then he laughs maniacally and he said, oh, that's just the way I laugh. And it's not really funny, it's just stupid. And all it did was frustrate the hell out of me, and in, and and just and I'm like, was that what they were trying to do? Just bait and stress actual Starfleet fan, Star Trek fans. So that was that the point? Is the joke on us? And like, it wasn't funny. Um, it didn't work. So then we get to the other part of the story because Boilermer basically they set the dog free, and the dog can talk and stand and fly, and and then we get the joke that she you know didn't know what a dog was. Later in the episode, uh, she sees a real dog on the ship and it licks her and she's like, oh my god, why would it do that? What, what, what the hell is that? And he's like, that's what dogs do. And she's like, oh, really? Because she didn't know what a dog was. Um, but yet she created one. So yeah. So we're back on the other ship because um, they have a mission where they have to rescue a crew. The, the ship is 
dead silent that they don't know what's happened. They get on there, they find the crew, and they find the crew's hiding in a cargo bay with no power, no gravity, no anything, because there's some being on the ship that feeds on power. Now, unfortunately, the Vulcan officer didn't know that, so she sets the power up again, and then suddenly this creature just starts expanding out from inside all the all the ship, inside the walls, everything. And it's this green, white, hot sort of green light, being tentacles and everything. It's actually an awesome alien. It's an awesome villain. It's a good monster. This could have been the whole episode. But instead, the whole time they have um, the, the, the babysitter captain and Mariner talking because she's realized that Mariner is just pretending to be useless because she doesn't want to get a promotion. And she admits, yes, I don't want a promotion. So instead of having this awesome adventure, basically, it's just in the background, which kind of works when it's the, 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 the bridge crew dealing with it. But she was on this mission, so they could have just had a really cool mission and didn't. So that was disappointing. Um, but it was still okay, but it was just not the center of what it could have been. So basically, and this is where it gets so incredibly stupid. Basically, um, they are stuck. They have to beam off the ship. Um, and they call up Rutherford. And they're like, Rutherford, we need you to beam us off because apparently the ship's about to blow up, so it's it's quick. Like, like they, they need the resolution to be quick. And because Rutherford has created a, a transporter that shaves like a second off the transport, transportation process, <laughs> um, they ask him. So he has to run to his experimental, or run, run down to either the... I don't know if he used the experimental transporter beam or whether he um, had put that to work in the actual transporter room, but in the end they all end up in the transporter room and they're all blue and glowing and making the noise. So this is the stupidest thing ever. There are multiple transporter rooms on the ship and there are even like um, the cargo ones which are really big and can transport a lot at one time. All they had to do was say... Cerritos, beam us over. Use all the transporters, because they're all manned, and just beam them all over at once. And once they have their patterns on the ship, it doesn't matter how long, if the ship blows up while they're being transported, it doesn't matter, the pattern still arrives. But no, we're going to waste time having one individual run to the transporter room or the cargo bay or wherever he's got the experimental transporter to beam them over because it'll save one second in the transportation process but we're all going to be mutants and possibly die. It's not funny, it's stupid, it makes no sense. And, yeah, obviously they, um, by this point, um, Boilermer has come back, um, and they, and not at this point, but right away Boilermer comes back, and then at the end of the episode we see that they've all been returned to normal, but when they were beaming over they didn't know that, so it's just stupid, it doesn't make any sense, and no one, I, I, I dare any... Lower Decks fan, New Trek fan, Drecky, whatever you want to call them, to, to explain to me how that wasn't stupid. It's just stupid. And it wasn't funny. Uh, if it was really funny somehow, it might have been interesting, but it wasn't. You could, you know, sometimes you can let um, science, logic, um, facts go for good drama or good comedy or good horror. If, if it works, you can, you can forgive it. But this, it, this, is, this is stupid. So we get to the very, very end, and basically um, the babysitter captain offers Mariner first officer job. She's like, she's like, look, I... This is another good part. She said, look, I need to stay in Lower Decks till I work out what I want to do, because I don't know what, who I want to be. And this does improve the character. We actually see she's not a Mary Sue like she looked in the first couple of episodes. She did go into Starfleet. She did have these great parents. She went in. She was a good officer, but she just didn't like Starfleet, didn't like the, the command, the, the responsibility, the command structure, anything like that. So she just basically got herself busted down to um, Ensign on her mother's ship, basically being taken care of, babysat, because she was, you know... And at least it gives her character some development, some, some logic. She's not just a Mary Sue for the sake of it. But then we have this little not-funny joke at the end where... Um, Commander Dubro is back on the ship and he hits on the new captain, of course, because he's like Captain Kirk. And he actually puts his hand on her shoulder when he's trying to ask her for a drink or a date or something, and she flips him into the bar. Um, and then they basically walk off laughing and he gives her the finger like, yeah, you're awesome. And I'm like, the thumb, thumbs up, like, you're awesome. And I'm like, 
do we really need to assault a guy um, just because he was a bit forward? I mean, all she had to do was swat his hand off and say, you know, go away, creep, or whatever. But no, it's it's funny, it's acceptable to assault a man, just like a boilermer is the running, like, white joke. It's like, with the exception of Rutherford, all the males are stupid stereotypes, overly aggressive, overly misogynistic, um, anxious, stupid, useless. They're, they're, they all have to be bad or stupid. And I just, it's just a trope that's in this show and in New Trek. Um, and it is getting tiresome. It serves no purpose. It doesn't, by default, make the women look any better. Um, and yeah, I don't like it. So I'm going to stop now. It's 15 minutes. I, I can't believe it took me that long to get through the episode. But um, yeah, so they did develop the character more. And they did sort of establish this earlier on, but I wasn't paying enough attention with Mar um, with Mariner. She is actually not a Mary Sue. And I'm glad they did that with the character. They've, I don't know whether they made it up afterwards or whether it was always the plan. But the first couple of episodes, she just seemed like a Mary Sue. And I'm glad they did that. Um, they still are treating all the, the men like idiots. I would like them to change that because it just undermines some of the characters and undermines the show as a whole because um, it doesn't respect the male characters like it does the female characters um and yeah like just stupid writing not funny um but at least the story and the characterization was better structured than normal and and minus a couple of really annoying elements it wasn't as bad as the first couple of episodes it is basically better now but um it's still there's just these, these moments that just you can't escape how stupid they are um and it ruins the rest of the episode. But I'm going to go. I've talked way too long. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.